LeBron should have more accolades than he currently has. This should be an undisputed fact. Yet when you look at his career holistically, in every stint from young Cavs LeBron to current Lakers LeBron, the sheer amount of accolades he should have won would have made him the undisputed GOAT. Today, I'm going through LeBron's career and giving him all the accolades he deserves. But to do this, I'm going to have to go all the way back to 2004. LeBron getting snubbed is a trend that goes all the way back to his first season, where averaging 21-6-6 six six apparently wasn't enough to make him an all-star team, not even as a reserve, despite the fact that Jamal McGlure averaged less points, assists, rebounds, steals and blocks in less minutes. But the NBA has a strange manner of excluding rookies who deserve all-star appearances, as in 75 years and just under 5,000 players, only 45 rookies have made an all-star team, with the 21st century only having two being Blake Griffin and Yao Ming, someone who had two years of NBA level training and someone who was allegedly created in a lab. And while LeBron is a genetic freak himself, there was a clear bias set against him for being a rookie, let alone a rookie as hyped as he was. That's probably why he didn't make the All-NBA 3rd team either, despite the fact that Meta World Peace, formerly Ron Artest, could have easily been replaced with the chosen one. Not to diminish Artest's impact, but the value of him to LeBron, at bare minimum, was equal. But LeBron's defensive impact has consistently been overlooked, especially in the earlier years, so much so that he didn't make a defensive team until 2009, when I believe he could have easily replaced Tayshaun Prince in his second season. And not just in his second season, but for the next four seasons, as he outperforms in most defensive stats, blocks, steals, defensive rebounds, total rebounds, defensive win shares, whatever. And while most rankings have one or two players ahead of LeBron, this isn't their video, so... But the overlooking doesn't stop there. At bare minimum, he should have been considered for the most improved player. It sounds crazy, but it isn't out of the realm for second year players to win most improved player. Like how Joel Embiid finished second in MIP voting in his second active season. So while Bobby Simmons did improve a great amount, going from 26 and 6 to 27, 7, 7 on 47% field goal and 55% true shooting is a greater improvement than going from 8, 5 and 2 to 16, 6 and 3. LeBron essentially had the same jump that won Ja Morant the MIP and turned him into a superstar. That same jump to superstardom put Ja on the All NBA second team and LeBron should have made it to the first team. Dirk played exceptionally well, but the main reason he was part of LeBron while being comparable in abilities was the winning factor. Yet the value LeBron added to the Cavs team was invaluable. It's undeniable that from a young age, LeBron has been arguably one of the most valuable players in the NBA. And I believe that NBA fans, players and media should have properly represented that by awarding LeBron the title of MVP in the 2006 season, allowing him to become the youngest MVP in league history. Because while Steve Nash was a monumental piece to the Suns' major results that season, contributing career highs in points and efficiency, LeBron's individual performance was significantly more impressive, and that translated to the values as well, because while Nash took a better team to a higher record than expected, even with the loss of Amari and Joe Johnson, LeBron was only four games behind them with a worse team, which is why LeBron has a higher on-off plus minus, and warp. Next, we have a two-year lull, and in 2009, LeBron was second in Defensive Player of the Year voting. But Dwight was so defensively dominant that there is no legitimate case to argue that LeBron should have won it in any manner. So with that dream dead, there are no more accolades for LeBron to acquire in Cleveland. So he finishes his first stint in the league with seven All-Stars, seven All-NBAs, one third team, one second team and five first teams, five All-Defensive teams, four second teams, one first team, most improved player award, the Rookie of the Year, three All-Star MVPs, a scoring title, three MVPs and the youngest MVP ever. From when he joined the Heat, he was clearly the best player in the league and this should have been reflected in awards, but the current youngest MVP ever, Derek Ross, took it away from him. And while LeBron says he deserves it, I say he doesn't. Not to say leading your team to the best record in the league isn't impressive, but when compared to LeBron, LeBron had a better individual season, averaging more points, rebounds, on better efficiency, and was arguably even more athletic. But LeBron being on the super team was always going to hurt his chances to win, but his individual value would always be overlooked because he had two stars and an NBA champion behind him. Yet despite his championship teammates and being the favourites going into the season, going into the finals, LeBron choked, he unquestionably crumbled, he irrefutably fumbled, he undeniably disappeared like the avatar, but only by 10 points at the most. It's not unreasonable to say there's a universe where LeBron can score 5 layups or make 5 assists or put down 10 free throws, and this universe is gone in the video. He clearly wouldn't deserve the finals MVP, so that would go to D-Wade, but he'd go on to win finals MVP for the next two seasons, so that should satisfy him. Or it should have, but LeBron would lose out on even more hardware, noticeably the Defensive Player of the Year. Mark Gasol has LeBron's Defensive Player of the Year in his house and it needs to come home. We all know a major reason he won it was because the media voted on the award and they hated Miami LeBron. 
and while Mark was undoubtedly a defensive presence, him only making second team all defense through a technicality, while LeBron made first team while being consensus one of the best defenders in the league should speak volumes to the difference in defensive quality between him and LeBron. Lucky enough he didn't get robbed in his final season in Miami, but his stint in Miami could have been significantly more fruitful, having one of the most accomplished seasons behind Hakeem and furthering his status into goathood with a free peak. Back on the Cavs now, for his second run in his first year, he deserved the MVP. While Curry was the best player on the blossoming system under Steve Kerr and Harden was becoming a standout in Houston, LeBron had come back to the Cavs and transformed them into a title contender, elevating the player of the cast around him, specifically Kyrie Irving. But more importantly than the regular season MVP and more important than the finals MVP he also deserved averaging 36, 13 and 8 in 46 minutes a game without Kyrie and Kevin Love, Boy. is him deserving the All-Star MVP. Why you ask? In 25 minutes, Russell Westbrook shot 28 times. Fuck that nigga. It's a glorified pickup game. Chill the fuck out. He doesn't deserve the MVP. In 2018, LeBron should have won All Star MVP and regular season MVP over James Harden. They had equally efficient seasons with LeBron averaging 28, 9, and 9 on 54% field goal and 37% from free. And while James led his team to 65 wins, LeBron's impact on the team at age 34 and carrying that terrible roster to 50 wins with a lower usage rate than Harden is otherworldly. And while it doesn't directly count towards MVP voting, his playoff run and finals appearance were monumental towards LeBron's legacy and were sincerely worthy of finals MVP over Kevin Durant. At the time, there were only three 50 point games, yet LeBron decided to drop 51 8 and 8 in his first game just to lose to the craziest blunder of all time. Goes to the Cavs, JR Smith brings it back out, throws it a hill, hill shot blocked. Yet somehow his teammates' blunder and getting swept wasn't enticing enough to keep him on the team, so he went to LA. In 2019, you can argue that LeBron should have made the all-second team. LeBron was leading his team to the fourth seed in the West after no one believed in him prior to his injury. Kawhi only played five more games than LeBron and his teammate Pascal Siakam was never better than LeBron at any moment that year. Also, the fact that two All-NBA caliber forwards were on the same team shows that they don't individually contribute towards winning, meaning put LeBron James on the all-second team. And we see that when LeBron is there and contributing to winning, he wins championships. While listed as a PG, they should have put him on the all-defensive team because he was actually a decent defender in 2020, minus the occasional televised defensive laps. He also should have been the MVP, as leading the league in assists while adding on 25 points and 8 rebounds while finishing with a top record in the harder West at age 36 should result in an MVP, and this would result in LeBron's true career ending at 19 All-Stars, 7 All-Star MVPs, 19 All-NBAs, 14 first teams, 4 second teams and 1 third team, 12 All-Defensive teams, 4 first teams, 8 second teams, Rookie of the Year, a Most Improved Player Award, an Assist Champ, a Scoring Champ, five championships, six finals MVPs, and six regular season MVPs. And this would undisputedly make LeBron the GOAT. So if we know that LeBron can accomplish this caliber of career, why isn't he the GOAT? I'll talk about this in this video here, so click that video if you want to see more about that topic. If you like the video, like the video. If you don't, don't. Subscribe if you want, and I'm done. Okay, bye.